You join us today in search of quite a rare phenomenon, a canal in the south of England. In fact, it's not even a canal, it's a navigation. So a navigation being um, an already formed river, but you just alter it into something that can carry barges, boats, vessels, either by slightly diverting its course or perhaps making the cut of the river a little bit deeper. Hi, I just look at the houses, they're amazing. Canals played a significant role in the Industrial Revolution. By the simple act of moving goods from A to B more efficiently than had ever gone before. The Itchin Navigation connected Southampton to Winchester and in itself tells a fascinating story. But it's that story that also helps us answer the question, why are there very few canals in the south of England? The curious history of this navigation starts way back in 1189 with stories from the reign of King John. A man called Godfrey de Lucy, the Bishop of Winchester, it's claimed was responsible for making the itch navigable as far back as Alsford, around eight miles to the east of Winchester. The story goes that he built the old pond here to head up the canal. That's not a completely out there theory, but it's more likely the pond was built for fishing. Our journey started here in the south of Winchester on Black Bridge. This is the site of the northernmost point of the navigation and the likely point of the wharf being the centre island here in front of us. We were now to head south on a 10 mile journey on this southern section of the Itchen Way. The first stop being the area around St Catherine's Hill. Further attempts were made over the centuries to improve the navigation of the river, including in Edward I's time. Despite this, there is not a tangible shred of evidence left to this day that the river was shaped by a human prior to the navigation's most important date. And that date was 1665. Now we're just walking along um, a navigable bit of the Itchen, the na Itchen navigation, just south of Winchester. So Winchester is in the, uh, the background there. And we've just noticed, or Rebecca's just noticed, um, all these bits of wood in the water, which were presumably like little jetties and or places where they used to tie their boats. Yeah, I guess so. And I wonder how old they are. Yeah, they're not very, I mean, they're not out of the water, they're underneath the water. Yeah, but they're sticking up. How, yeah, they're sticking up and they're definitely not trees or anything. They're yeah. literally bits of wood. So the 1665 Act planned to make this river navigable for boats and barges and vessels alike. But of course, you can't just dig out the river and hope that it becomes a little bit deeper. You've only got 25 metres until you get down to Southampton at sea level. So they planned to use a couple of ingenious ideas to make this navigable for boats and barges and vessels alike. A river naturally meanders through the landscape, so by taking shortcuts in its course, you can in theory increase the water in that given section. And of course that's okay in principle, but you need something else. You need one of these. This is a site of Compton Lock, and similar to its more modern versions of locks on canals, it did exactly the same job. It held enough water in each section that you could keep a barge or a vessel afloat. Now, what's staggering about all of this is this 11 mile navigation took 50 years to build. Throughout the history of the, the navigation, it had various acts which catered for a lot of different things and some of those were sort of minor petty disputes, if you will. So for example, what if two barges met either side of a lock who had priority? Now, the fact that there were only six barges on the whole of this 11 mile navigation told you how petty it was. They even placed markers either side or certainly on the southern side of the locks to indicate that if you got to one of those first, you had priority, especially if you were coming up Upwards, uh, heading north towards Winchester. Um, some of the other disputes looked at the use of the actual water itself. So for example there were mills all the way along here, there was meadows which is what we're walking across right now and the meadows would need water for irrigation certainly in the spring and the summer months. 
Well, so you can't really you can't really see it that well, but just between sorry, nope, that's me. <laughs> just between there is Shawford single gate. So presumably that wasn't a lock as such, and you can see the brickwork in there. Mm. You can see a couple of um, the old bits of wood in the yeah the beams, the beams thing, yeah. in the water, can't you as well? You can With see metal the metal bits in. Yes. Um, so presumably that wasn't actual a lock as such. It was a single gate to stem the flow of water to a degree. Um, yeah. Well, onwards now to the next lock. So the point about the six barges operating on this navigation really highlights the issue it had. The Napoleonic Wars were in full flow and commercial traffic was being pushed inland and yet they still only operated six barges. Now it also is highlighted by the fact that the people of Southampton didn't really ever pay any attention to this navigation. The flow of traffic was very unbalanced. There was a lot of coal heading north to Winchester but hardly anything coming from Winchester back to Southampton. The Napoleonic Wars once again gave rise to the idea that the Itchen navigation should be connected to the canal up at Basingstoke at the very least. But the significant cost of doing so combined with the lack of traffic at the time meant the idea was never more than an idea. All along the Itchen today we've seen steps, uh, sort of pre-built, fairly modern built steps down into the Itchen and we've seen people use them for swimming. Even now we're at the end of March and it's it's blooming cold, right? And you think, God, you're mad. But actually you wonder how, how many years and decades and centuries that's gone on for because yeah. people have been using the Itchen for centuries and said you're millennia. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, now we're, we're still seeing people use it today, which is great. That's the whole point, I guess, isn't it, really? Yeah, but cold. But cold. It's not that cold today, though, is it? It would be in there. Yeah, I, yeah, I get that. <laughs> I get that completely. So we're just coming up to Withymee Lock now, one of the many locks on this navigation, which has now been turned into either sluice gates or weirs. But you can still see the remains of the lock and, and how they narrowed the water through here and the difference in the height. And of course, just to our left, up that way, is pretty much the reason for the demise of this navigation, the coming of the railways. So in 1840, London and South Western Railway opened up their main line between Southampton and London. And almost overnight, you could travel between those two locations at an average speed of around 42 miles an hour. That was probably 10 times that you could do on the Itchin navigation. Now, within 30 years, commercial traffic had pretty much ceased uh, on the navigation itself, which shows you how quickly the railways took over this part of the country. So we're here by this stretch of the Itchen navigation, which has got a section of the River Itchen close to it and about 10 feet below us. Now, the story of the Itchen navigation really sums up for me why there are a lack of canals in Southern England. The lack of industrial towns, a lack of coal beneath our feet, all gave rise to a lack of traffic on those barges and vessels. And of course, what that meant was there was no real join up with the rest of the canal network in the Midlands and the North of England. And of course, perhaps one of the only uh, exceptions to that rule is, of course, the Kent and Avon Canal, one surviving relic of that industrial transport era. So from the banks of the Itchen Navigation, or the River Itchen, or both, um, we bid you farewell. This has been our first um, navigation, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. Not That's why you keep trying to say canal. I know, you keep trying to get <laughs> canal and river and it's navigation. No. It's been really fun. I've learned a heck of a lot in trying to learn about this canal slash navigation. Yeah, it's a lot of history behind it. Like a lot of way back history as well, not just like yeah. more modern. Also trying to film with a dude in the background and the dude in the background keeps on banging something. <laughs> We were trying to in film his garden in his garden. He's like bang, bang. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you uh, next week when we're hopefully going to slowly ease out of lockdown and we can travel to places like here. Yes, um, a bit further. A bit further afield. And we can look at different things and bring you different exciting content. We're really quite excited about that. We are very. So stay tuned and we'll have some corkers coming up in the uh, next few weeks.